Hello and welcome to Life Challenges, better known as a conversation with Dr. David Clayman. We started last month talking about, and I could screw this up, sociopathy. Social, sociopathy. 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 Why is that word so hard, sociopathy? Not hard for me. Well, I, I realize <laughs> that. No, but it's, it's, yeah. Start out with kind of giving us a definition of the word before we go further. Well, it's, it's part of a string of terms. Uh, sociopathy is not a defined d diagnosis in the, our manuals, but it's a description of a, of a um, particularly not nice kind of a person who... Um, sociopath. Is a sociopath. And, that I know. And what they do is they behave in a way that is, uh, they, leave a, they leave a path of destruction. They don't understand what's going on. They break rules. They're sneaky. Um, uh, they're the kind of worst of the worst of the kind of people who do illegal and immoral kind of things. Although, I wanted to start this day that we have a book called Socio Sociopaths in Suits. In, in Suits? In Suits. And what it is is a lot of the, the traits of people with this string of disorder, this string of personality stuff things, um, do very well in high level um, positions. CEOs of companies. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that have sociopathic or psychopathic trends, where they don't take into account other people. They set their own rules, and they're they're sometimes bewildered when they don't get their way. This is not a narcissist. This is not somebody who's okay. really self-centered. This is somebody who kind of suspends the rules for themselves and acts in by their own, and, and then becomes shocked when other people call them on it and then gets angry or they can act contrite. I mean, they're really very, very... Uh, but are they successful? The lady I... that just is going to prison. Oh, yes, the one she, who invented the blood machine. Yeah, she's, she's a sociopath. Yeah. Now, see, I don't see her... I see her as a crook because she... <laughs> well, that's what they are. <laughs> she, she claimed to, I mean, I was mesmerized by her. She was very attractive. When she spoke, she was interesting. She was very comfortable to watch. And I was, and, and I saw her on the Today Show and other shows talking about this machine and, and how wonderful it was. And, and I, she was lying the whole time. Right. Yeah. And I didn't care. But don't, don't people like that know there's an end? That there's an end result, someone will find out there is a... No, that's not what they consider. Wow. Yeah, and they, they will... They will not concede until they have to concede, and then when they do concede, they're trying to figure a way to... Like she has. Yeah. She's tried to get out of prison. She turns herself into the victim. She Has two blames, children. She blames everybody else. They set up their world so that they're in control. And they, they have no moral code. It's not like the, it's not like the narcissist when we've talked about self-centered yes. on that. Uh, so narcissists have their own problems with self-centeredness and need to be center of attention and all that. But the sociopath has no code, no moral code. Standard, and, and I'm going to review from the quickly last time. We have, starting off with little teeny kids, we have... Oppositional defiant disorder where people kind of like this brats, but they kind of misbehave. This is the way, this is David's way of like trying to explain things. Okay. Then we have, so we have oppositional defiant disorder. Then we have conduct disorder where the, the regular things that kids would or would not do, these kids do. Tearing wings off flies, tormenting animals, destroying property, um, causing harm to other people and not caring. They kind of laugh at it. That's the part that, that, that kind of like, so that's, who cares? That's mental illness, I guess, being a sociopath is mental illness. Well, it's, it fits. It's, it's, see, I don't want to get technical. Yes. But those are the people who end up going and shooting mass shootings. But oh, some. Some people who are mass shooters aren't sociopaths. I mean, it, see, our world is not that easy to deal with, <laughs> the, what, the world that I deal in with, with the labels. Right. But look at the behavior. So, so when you look at the behavior, you look at this, remember we only have antisocial personality disorder or antisocial personality, okay. which is kind of like after you become conduct, if you make, make it to seven, 15 or 17, we can switch you over into personality disorder. And antisocial, going against the rules. It's not antisocial not liking people because a lot of the 
Ted Bundy. Did you ever see pictures of how charming he was? Yes, and women, women have talked about how oh, charming he was. That's how he got them and raped them. And killed them. And killed them. And then looked and smiled and, and, and looked at people like they were crazy. He was going to defend himself in court. And, and this is just, rather than us looking at sociopathy as like a, a little kind of contained thing, it's, it's a large series of behaviors of people that don't go by social rules, are out to serve themselves, become indignant when people call them on it and seek to find a way to continue to manifest. When they get into prison very often, by the way, they, they can be the leaders of the pack. Ah. Because they, they're smooth and they're very clever and they're very bright. And there's some people who, when they're sitting in a boardroom, um, kind of suspend the idea that maybe if we make this decision on the board level or while he's, they're, they're dealing with the board, it's not that big a deal. So it's like it can go one of two ways. You can have the CEO, but you can have the criminal. You can go, I mean. They have the traits. It's traits. Traits. It's traits. So, so when you take, talk about sociopathy, you talk about psychopathy. So we've come up whoa, with all whoa, these. Whoa, what's psychopathy? Same thing. Okay. It, it, it's kind heard. of the same thing, but different. So, <laughs> but it's, it's, see, for the lay person, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we, the, sociopathy has now become a word because a sociopath sounds. Right, sociopath. Yeah. Yes. And they're the, they're the, they're, they're the evil, you know, nasty people and they and they they can get into positions of power we have like people that probably represent that way and 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 I want I was thinking about this last time I really want you to understand that the way in which we have to look at the world from a, from a mental health and then from a forensic standpoint is do they have traits because we all have traits remember I've told you this for 30 years 30. we've been doing this stuff people can have obsessive compulsive traits okay but they're not obsessive compulsive. They're orderly, they predict things. And as long as that behavior doesn't become the sole rigid way they deal with the world, it's just the way, they're idiosyncratic. You know, people that every night, their desk has to be clean. Have you ever been around those people that? Don't do that, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah it's okay. I, I could never do that. But I have compulsive traits from my work. But I have other traits for other places. So, Healthy people, if you put the, all the little things in a little circle, we, we can move in and out of things. Okay. We don't have a primary thing that may in fact cause us trouble. Now here, this is the part that's important. So we go from kind of traits to style to problem. I'm gonna do it that way. So lots of people have sociopathic traits or these manipulative, suspending morals, writing your own rules, you see it all the time. When I was when I worked, we used to refer to the M word. It used to be you manipulated a situation or you, you manipulated go. something, but that wasn't a negative. It was most of the time in my work, it was a positive. So if you put manipulation, if you put um, disregarding rules sometimes, a little bit of irreverence is not a bad thing at times. Um, my inability to follow rules if I have to work for somebody has a little bit of a, a trait of my setting my own rules. Now, do I worry about getting, and here's the problem. I worry if I, if I do something right. that is counter to the prevailing moral code, and I'm, I don't want to make it, but if, if I say, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do electronic medical records. So, so what I do is I say, right? I, I'm not going to get myself in trouble for that because I'm going to find another way that I don't have to do them. But I will give up things so I don't have to do it by other people's rules. That's why I'm in business for myself. It's adaptive. Right. Sometimes these traits are adaptive. When they become maladaptive, so there's two ways they become, well, there's multiple ways. They become maladaptive is when they cause harm. They, they, they create problems for themselves in a repetitive fashion. Repeat offenders in the criminal system. People that start businesses over and, and do the exact same thing with, oh, Ponzi schemes, the guys right. that do that. Um, Madoff. Um, Epstein. Oh. That's a sociopath. And so, a perv. So, <laughs> I was going to say that's a little bit more than No, no. Sociopath is, for me, sociopath is like the worst. And then you have other little 
color that they put into right, their lives. I right. mean, the guy that, they, they, that he could do this for, he said, look at the suspension of morality in this man. Look, at, we'll, we'll use him rather than some other more recent individuals. Right. He built an empire. He lied. He right. over, Santos, that little creep that's in New York, he's got some sociopathic trends. He's also you got think? some. think? Yeah. But he's also, but, it, but he, he probably doesn't rise to that level because he won't car his harm. He won't, he, he just, he just, he, he's, he's got a lot of other labels. But so you have the first part of just, remember for us, personality disorders are a deeply ingrained, maladaptive pattern of behavior that causes significant disruption in one or more major areas of life. Breaking that down, it's a long-term pattern repetitively. It's a style that ultimately ends up having people run into the same kind of problems. They, I'm trying to, do you see this in your children? Do you see this in a teen? Do you see this? In other words, is there any way to correct it? Is, or is it just something that's going to go full until well, it ends itself? That's, that's a really good question. When I used to see adolescents, and now when I do risk assessments on adolescents, there are times that I go, uh oh, because oh. I hate to say it, I've been doing this for 50 years. Right. I get the ickies. <laughs> the ickies. <laughs> get the That's ickies. a scientific term. <laughs> and Well, when you have a kid that comes in who's seven and a half years old that says, with profanity, and I can't repeat it, that mm -mm 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 -mm, I would rather take a knife and slit, slit her throat, that child is probably going to be heading to a place that we really have to do some significant interventions. They're likely to cause harm, not only to themselves in the long run, but to Whoa. other people. Oh, they don't care. They don't care. And they're not psychotic. So you have to, this is all this stuff. You don't have to, they, they don't have the thought disturbance that they're hallucinating or they, 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 they're hearing voices and they're having commands. They're just and full of hate. They, they're, they're full of self-serving, harmful behaviors that don't, they would, they could run over somebody in the street and say, oops, I just felt something and have no, no remorse. That's like another piece. They, there's no remorse. The only time they will express remorse is when they get caught and it lasts as long as it, they need to have remorse. And they're very convincing, by the way, so they can get out of trouble again. Now, remember, there's, there's the, the personality disorder where it's the standard operating procedure. And then there's that mid-range where there's a style and they just do that. They, they get themselves in trouble. And then all of a sudden, honest to goodness, the, the, the puppy dog eyes, the crying. The so it's a learned behavior. I mean, it's something they practice. And, and, and well, they don't practice. See, it's not intentional. It's just something. They it's, know how to use it. It evolves as they deal with the, okay, the world. Right. Um, they've tried to say that there's brain studies that certain parts of the brain light up because if you're a sociopath or you're a psychopath or you're an uh, antisocial personality disorder, and it, it's not holding as much. Because it's, com it's complex. It doesn't hold up that you can put a brain scan on and say, oh, yeah, this guy's going to turn out to be right, a sociopath. Right. And I think all of us, all of us, at times in our lives, use all the behaviors that become really bad behaviors. If you lie to your parents and you get away with it and it gives, you a, it gives you a boost and an adrenaline charge, it's likely you're going to try it again. And if it works, t kids that go to school and lie to teachers, and they, Freddie Haskell, Eddie Haskell. Eddie Haskell. All right, for those of you out there in the viewing audience <laughs> that don't know who Eddie Haskell is, it's from Leave it to Beaver. Go on whatever that YouTube. channel is and look up Eddie, Eddie Haskell and watch like three episodes of Leave it to Beaver. And you'll see this kind of sleazy, manipulative. High Mrs. Whatever, High Mrs. Cleaver. And, and behind the scenes, he's, he's like a real butthead. <laughs> it's just, he's nasty. So the question I have does this behavior, can it ever be rectified? Well, I'm thinking of Elizabeth, what's her name, the blood lady. She'll never, she'll never she, admit she's wrong. Because she's still working at it. I she's, mean, she's. She's still convinced when she got, I mean, she's delaying her um, entry into prison for right. 11 years. She thinks, she thinks the world's done her wrong. Right. Um, she walked into court with her um, fancy dancy clothes on. She still is, she's still perpetuating this. She's had two babies since, since she's been, I mean. Do you so, know why she had two babies? So that she wouldn't have to go to jail. So that's, 
So, so now you're describing these things that are, are, have nothing to do with her wanting to be a loving mother. Right. Um, and we have examples of this everywhere. People that just think they're above the law or they, they, they live in a world where they can write their own rules. And we have families that do that. I mean, families who have codes of ethics that the rest of the world is wrong or we don't have to do it that way. And, and some of it's benign. Different sociocultural sets where we don't do things we do, we're required to do things that are culturally bound. Right, right. But I tried to find a simple way to, to explain to you what sociopathy was, and I got I went started going down my rabbit holes of looking at the literature and and there's all these battles about the labels and everything else. They are just not nice people, but they have qualities that if they use them appropriately can do positive things as long as it serves their needs. How's that? I'm just thinking of a parent who looked at her child and sees sees behaviors, and, and I, I can remember as a mother, I'd go, they'll, they'll outgrow that one, and, and surely uh. they do. I mean, whatever trait it was at the time, and you, you, you just kind of you know accept it. But then there's children that don't outgrow behaviors, and it's kind of like, what do you do? And we come right back to the fact that there's no mental health system. So here, here's the thing. We cannot treat personality disorders with medications. I can understand that. We can treat some of the behaviors, agitation, um, some of the stuff, we can, if they're depressed, if they're anxious, we can kind of tone down the surface of what their presentation is, but they usually, they won't come, a sociopath won't come for therapy. I was gonna say, I'm, back, I'm thinking of Elizabeth again. Sure. I don't see her saying to anybody, I need, I need a oh, and, counseling. And, uh, and there's three different diagnostic groups that we have to deal with that are just horrible to deal with in therapy. A sociopath, you just don't know who's being manipulated. I mean, it's really horrible. And they, they can be charming one day and they're back in the cell and what they do is they, they have an uncanny, uncanny, a true sociopath, an uncanny ability to read other people, to know how to get to them, to know how to bother them. So that if, if you're dealing with somebody who's truly in that realm, they will, um, intuitively know how to make you feel. Um, Le Hannibal Lecter, if you watch him. Yeah. And, and these, these are exaggerated forms, but sure. how he got to Clarice, and he knew what to do. And, right. I, and it's not that they, they, they it's just their style. They, they, that's the way they think every morning. So the goal would be is to gain control of Clarice. Recognize a weakness in someone else. Feel it. I mean, they're, it. they're so intuitive. It's unbelievable. When you're sitting with somebody in a, uh, because I've done so much criminal work, I've sat with these folks and they try to play me. They can say, be, I've heard. Can you, you be played? I've been played. I'm not, just because my time with them is limited and my, my responsibility to them is limited, but they were gonna, they're gonna convince, convince, try to convince me that they were um, not responsible. It was somebody else's fault for why they killed their so-and-so or stole the money or beat somebody up. So, and they'd sit there and they, they, you can feel, I, when I'm doing the interviews, you can feel it. As they, they're, as I'm trying to figure them out, they're doing, and they're sometimes better than we are because that's their whole modus operandi. I'm trying to get enough information to write a report. They're trying to figure a way to control the situation so I'll write the report they want me to. Right, They'll right. They'll be absolutely, you, you, you get it. There's been times that I've, I've received records about these people, and you'd think that they're gonna come in and they're gonna have fangs and all this, and they come in and they're all clean cut, and they say, oh, Dr. Clay, and this is the best one, Dr. Clay heard about you. What do you mean heard about me? This is the old days, and I said, well, this talk. <laughs> so, so if they've been in jail or, or they've had other people that, have, that I've evaluated, they'll, they'll know what I do. Right. And, and the fun, fun part for me is that I am very predictive in my interviews. I tell the same stories, I maneuver the same way, and they, and they know I'm gonna do it, and they try to get me off my game. And it's, um, it's very interesting. And I had one guy that I interviewed for 25 hours a couple of years, many years ago. And he was the toughest interviewer I've ever had. And I, 
when we were doing it, he would come in and I saw him, I can't remember how many times we brought him to the office, but people would watch the interviewing because it was like watching international ping pong, you know, the table tennis. Right. You'd go, like, well, whap, pink, whap, pink, or wink back. And, it, and so I would throw out something and, and he would be better, he, he'd slam me back with something else until we, we it's like at the end of it, go, after a two and a half hour interview, we were both pretty tired. But he was less tired than I was because he was getting invigorated by it. I was getting tired from fighting. Right. So. Did you accomplish anything after the 25 hours? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I, my, my goal was different. My goal. So what I learned is I learned to not let him get into my skin. That's a good lesson for anybody. But with sociopaths, you don't know. They, they will set you up. They will, they will know. They, they'll go online. They'll talk to people. They watch how you respond. They, they, they just intuitively do that, like I will when I'm watching somebody when I'm doing a vow. And then they'll turn on you, or they'll, they'll watch. They'll, they, they, I, I'm trying to think of some old examples, because I don't do much criminal work anymore, that, that they'll, it'll be a three hour interview. And at about two and a half hours, they get, they, they, they've collected enough data watching how I respond to what they do. When do I tell a story? Or when do I sit back and get real formal? Or when do I flinch? Mm. They pick it up. They're, they're that uncanny. It's unbelievable. So if What I was thinking was they could do that to John Q. Citizen in the street as a criminal and, and read people and know how to effectively... Do bank whatever they want to do. Fraud, fraudsters, people that commit bank fraud, financial crimes. Or romance. Uh, romance, uh, oh my God. They, they take advantage of the women and they, they that's, a sociopathic, that's a sociopathic and some narcissistic. Yeah, because I have to keep saying all these little things go together. But you, you don't even know you're being played unless it's illegal, unless... Something happens, like they get caught, and then that cycle of them getting caught, they're scrambling to prevent it, they're blaming everybody else. They never accept responsibility, and if they do, it's a manipulation. It's absolutely fascinating. It's, it's, I can see where you could look for that in everyday life. I mean, where... Okay, so this, this is maybe the best thing for you to hear from this show. We all have these traits. And many of these traits, if used appropriately, it's like, I'm going to give you, Oxycontin is a really good drug. The pain pill. And if you use it appropriately, it helps people. But if you don't use it appropriately, right. it hurts people. Yes. So if you look at pain meds, we now have a whole addiction problem with the with 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 system that pushed the drug and not the cure of the drug. And so I'm, I'm using that as a crazy example. We all have stuff. I mean, actors, lecturers, if you can't go on, when I lecture, if I can't win an audience over, they're never gonna bring me back. So I have a little bit of that manipulative, hist the, 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 the actor, whatever right, like that. Right. Us doing this. I mean, a lot of people will think, oh, this television, you and I don't even know that they're here. Right. S except when we look at the timer to see how much time exactly. we have left. <laughs> and, but see, that's, that's, we all have those pieces. It's when those pieces start to cause harm or have the potential to cause significant harm. How long did Madoff justify what he was doing? How long did Epstein justify what he Forever. was doing. I mean, long time. And, and then when you see someone, and this is the part that just gets me, that, that, they, that they showed, and I'm not, I'm not gonna name names, but they showed that they said this and they say, no, I didn't. And they really believe that they're being attacked and they didn't say the thing that they, they did say. Epstein especially, Madoff copped out. When, as he, when he got caught, I, and I always kind of attributed it to his age, he just, he folded. He didn't fold? Where was he, where was he living? In his penthouse? No, I mean, once he was arrested. Well, we went to prison. See, now, okay, so here's the deal. That's, 
he combined some of the narcissistic stuff with the sociopathy, and when he got to prison and he couldn't do it anymore, and, he, and for a while they said he was running things inside Oh, okay, I did not know that. Okay. And, and it fell. And, and, and for narcissists, when their ability to control the world around them falls, they fall, and then they scramble for the rest of their lives to regain control, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. The, the, there's tarnish on them, but they come back with the, the nice suits and they think, oh, I'm going to get away with this again. They just fall back in the pattern. But we all have... My staff laughs when I'm getting ready to, get, to do a big project because I come in the office, I go into the, the closet and I bring the broom out and I bring the vacuum cleaner out and I have to, I have to clean the area around my desk. I stack things that are not relevant to that case. I do all this compulsive stuff. And they say, oh, oh David's getting ready to do a report. That's adaptive. Um, when I go out to um, do something political, I have to fit my personality sometimes to that person. That's adaptive when we can change a little bit of right. our personality. Right. Now, it, it's maladaptive if you're such a wimp, I'm going to use that, that you, you always just go and act like the people around you and you kind of just fake it. But So we, we have, all of us have these traits. Every one of us has the potential for doing it. But the parent, I'm going to go back to your comment, that sits there and locks their doors. How many of those have you ever met? We'll put locks on the doors inside their bedroom so their children can't get in because they're afraid of their kids. Yeah. I've and they can't control the kids. And the kids go to the DHHR people and, and lie, right. lie, but don't lie the way we do. It's not white lies. They look and they are so clever at 15, 14, 12 years old that the um, CPS people and the law actually think that the parents are wrong. They learn the system. They are quick to adapt to the system in a way that benefits them. They don't learn the system per se because they don't care about the stuff that's not relevant to them about following the rules. A um, uh, little piece of sociopathy, right? Do you ever speed? Well, I've been known to. Well, I was coming down here this morning and there was somebody going 22 miles an hour. And, <laughs> and I said, how can anybody do that? Now, the rule... <laughs> 25 miles an hour was the speed limit that oh, showed up. Oh, okay. I got All my right. little computer that okay. says 25 yes. minutes. All right. yes. 25. I went that by. That would be my husband who does the speed limit. I went by that person at 52 miles an hour. <laughs> Grumbling. Now, that's a little bit of my writing the rules. Now, right, right. If, if I lived my life always going at my speed, not caring about what was going on, all that kind of stuff, um, justifying, rationalizing when I caused harm. That's sociopathy, but it goes, it, it goes to levels, Sharon, that I just can't even explain to you when, you when you see this. Watch Netflix, watch HBO, watch all the places that do the, the, the stories about people in high places. You'll see sociopathy. Yeah. It's been interesting. On behalf of Dr. Klayman, I'm Sharon King, thanking you for watching the Library Television Network. Till next time, bye-bye. Maybe I...